Rahim, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, good. So I give you this assignment. Who wants to talk about uh, those three positive and three negative adjectives? Safa, you didn't take class yesterday, right? Yes, sir. I was not feeling well. Okay. So yesterday we talked about adjectives. Now you know what adjectives are, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So you tell me, Safa, uh, what are uh, close uh, class words and open class words? Do you have any idea? Um, yes, sir, but I'm forgetting right now. Uh, so wait, let me think about it. Okay. Uh, yes. Sir, um, close class words are mm. actually the articles, I guess, and Very open good. class are nouns and adjectives or verbs, I guess. Very good. Yes, you're right. Uh, so the lexical, sir, the lexical. I think the lexical words which gives a meaning, very like good. nouns, so they are the open class. Very and good. And for example, articles and uh, prepositions, those those are the closed class. Very good. Yes, we studied yesterday. We talked about that, and then we uh, discussed uh, adjectives. So yes, you're right. So whenever we study these parts of speech. So for our ease, we do divide uh, these words into two main categories. Number one is uh, close or uh, open class words or content words. Those, as you just said it, that those are uh, which has a clear lexical meaning. For example, adjectives or uh, nouns or adverbs. While okay, close sir. class words are uh, those words, as you mentioned, uh, articles, conjunctions, prepositions, and pronouns, they are very limited, right? And yeah, yeah. Uh, mostly we do not get these new words in these uh, uh, close class words. Like, have you ever heard that uh, nowadays we have a new pronoun no, pronouns are those I, he, she, it, and they, and we have like have these pronouns for so many years and we cannot add other pronouns in it. But these uh, open class words, I mean, every time, every day nowadays, we can have uh, different kind of words. So we'll be just focusing on uh, like for today or for two, three days, we'll be discussing these uh, adverbs, conjunctions, adjectives and uh, pronouns and nouns, right? We have studied adjectives and adjectives are limited. Remember, if you count pronouns, they're like it's not more than 120 or 130 uh, uh, prepositions. So they are limited, while adjectives, verbs, nouns, they are unlimited. There are so many. So if you want to improve your vocabulary, what you need to do is that you have to uh, go and learn these uh, adjectives. So yesterday I asked them to go and uh, find three positive and three negative adjectives about yourself. So can anybody tell me three positive and three negative adjectives? So yeah. I have been working okay. I have been working on it sir recently. Uh -huh. I have completed just two positive adjectives. Two it means that you don't have uh, okay. So you didn't find any other adjective positive adjective about yourself. Okay, tell me first one adjective. Sir, I have found many, but uh, the explanation, sir. Okay. Uh, I started. 
I started working on it at, at 30. Okay. The first one is convivial. Okay, so. Yes. I'm a convivial person. Four, okay. I like the company of delegate and gregarious people. Very good. I can be confirmed. I can be confirmed of my convivial personality by my classmates. Okay. For we have spent three years together. Very good. Besides, uh, the smile on my face testifies my conviviality. Very good. This is the first one, sir. Yes, the second one. The second one is encouraging. Okay. I'm also encouraging. For okay. I have lifted off my cousins with me who live in a place with no facilities. Okay. I support them in all their works. Right. That's good. Besides, wh whoever comes from village for doctors to be checked up, I support and encourage them to. That's very good. Very good. Yes. This is a recently the. Recently, wow. the season of admission ended in which I had encouraged many students to take admission at Edwards College. Right. Okay, fine. Very good. Yes, and sir. any negative adjective? Yes, sir, I was working on it that your message came to join the class. Okay, so you should go today again and find these. You remember I told you about those personality disorders? Yes, sir. You should go and uh, find or search these personality disorder. Okay, it will help you in many ways. You will uh, learn new adjectives, and you will also know about yourself and uh, about other people. Right. So go and search that as well. Anybody else wants to talk about their uh, about these three positive and three negative adjectives? I have sent you that file. Sir. Yes, so yes, you sent me that file, but uh, yes. now tell us so that everybody can know. Yes, tell me one positive adjective or two positive adjectives. Sir, um, that is in my laptop, and sir, I am not able to tell you now, sir. Okay, fine, it's okay. Okay, is there anybody else who wants to talk about it? so that we can then continue the class. I think today you also have another class, right? <coughs> yes, sir, at 10. So, yes. So who will tell me uh, about their, uh, the, about those three positive and three negative adjectives? Sir, I'll have to think about it. Okay, yes, you didn't take class yesterday, so yes, you didn't know. But anybody else? Haris Saeed, Farhan Anwar, huh? Farhan, are you there? Where are other students? We have only eight students today. I think I should not upload those videos because you think that I'm uploading those videos. So why take this early class? Can I? Yes, sir. So it means that I should not uh, upload those videos. Okay, um, can you hear me properly? Yes, sir. So why they don't respond? Ah, oh, Pashal Ibrahim? Sir. Sir, Farhan Anwar is shy. Yes, he's shy, it's okay. But Farhan, you should talk. Nobody can see you. Switch off your camera and say whatever you want to say, don't be shy.
Okay, Farhan, just raise your hand if you are there. You know there is this button and just press that. If you can hear me, just raise your hand. Okay, so let's talk about these adjectives. We'll be talking uh, about adjectives today and we'll discuss it tomorrow as well. So if you remember, I told you that there, the, the, I mean, we will be studying this grammar uh, in two ways. Remember, one is prescriptive and the other one is descriptive. No, very good, Farhan. Very good. I can see you. Okay, so you here. All right. Okay, so uh, like I told you this, that there are students that they need to learn these rules or how to use adjectives and how to learn adjectives. And then we'll study also these names so that tomorrow if somebody asks us so that we can explain it. Or in exams, you will be given or you will be asked to define close class words or uh, these content words or these uh, function words. So you have to learn the names and you also have to know adjectives, many adjectives, and uh, then you have to uh, know how to use them. So if you see, like they can even ask you to identify adjectives. Now, how can you identify adjectives? Now, ad adjectives can be identified by their form. Like, for example, yesterday we talked about these suffixes. Affixes means prefix and suffix. Now, if you remember, we talked about suffixes. So if you see this, uh, some... Uh, We'll be talking about suffixes and uh, prefixes uh, that how can we make adjectives and how can we identify adjectives. So if you see on your screen, uh, you see, you can see your screen, right? There is this uh, file that I have shared with you. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Now you can, I, I mean, there are adjectives that can be identified by their form. Like for example, whenever we have a suffix able or uh, al or uh, ant or ary or full. So whenever we have these last there, they can be adjectives. Like for example, if you see this one, I will highlight it. So, and you should also know that how it works. So able means capable of being, right? Like for example, gullible, okay? So we have this suffix at the end. See, I-B-L-E, or, in uh, or invincible, or predictable, or credible. Now, we can identify that these are, ad uh, these are adjectives, why? because of the suffix. So you have to learn these uh, suffixes and whenever it's, it will help you, remember, it will help you build your vocabulary. Like for example, if you can identify adjectives, adverbs, it will help you learn new words and then you will uh, divide it into different categories and you will improve or enrich your vocabulary. So do you know what gull gullible is? Anybody? Trustful. Huh? Trustful. Trustful? Trustful. Uh, you can say trustful, yeah, or something. Yes. Anybody else? Can you use it? In a, and remember, uh, do you know there are like, uh, we say active vocabulary or passive vocabulary. Do you know what is active vocabulary and what is passive vocabulary? Please reply me quickly, okay? Yes, huh? sir. Yes. Sir, or, act, act, uh, active vocabulary is that that we usually use in speaking. So that is, uh, we can easily use uh, uh, those vocabulary. But passive vocabulary is that that we have it in mind, uh -huh. but we uh, cannot use it. Very uh, good. In daily life. Sir. Yes, yes, you are right. 100% right. That like, for example, I've seen there are so many people that uh, they have a lot of vocabulary. They have a lot of words. 
but sometimes uh, when we use it they understand it but they cannot use it so it's useless to have that word if you cannot use it so once you know this uh, adjectives adverbs and you can identify them you can use them in your sentences and you can make your uh, passive vocabulary into active vocabulary so that's why we are studying these parts of speech so that we can identify different uh, words or different uh, uh, adjectives or different uh, uh, adverbs so we then can use it in uh, our writing and speaking so if a word you you know it you understand it and you can use it that is your active vocabulary but if you don't use it in your daily life then it is or uh, in your writing or speaking it is your passive vocabulary so if you know this word gullible and you don't know how to use it so it is your passive vocabulary so gullible is a person who can be easily convinced or persuaded okay gullible he is a very gullible person i mean anybody can convince him very easily so do you think who can, you people who are can be easily tricked yes easily tricked so uh, yes so no, do you no, think no. do you know dokabaz na again i told you don't translate words into urdu remember try to explain it it will improve your speaking the best way to improve your speaking is just pick a word word adjective or verb or any any word and then try to explain it with examples right so like you just said it that it can be easily tricked or convinced or persuaded see we learned three four words with it persuaded or convinced okay or you just said uh, it, it can be easily tricked so do you think are you gullible are you guys gullible everyone is gullible sir <laughs> yes everyone is gullible yes i mean i mean in certain places right not always but sometimes we are exactly, gullible sir. yes yeah, when, okay. and when you get married you will know this word that you are very gullible because your wives will always convince you <laughs> can i <laughs> yes. yes so gullible is like can you like it's kind of uh, i mean we patans are very gullible like we can easily be convinced okay what what about invincible do you know this invincible unbeatable sir very good invincible Unbe army invincible yes, yes. invincible okay predictable or what is credible do, do you know this word credible it's also a very good word he's a very credible yes, sir, person yes a person who can be trusted <laughs> very good who can be trusted now you see this uh, credibility or credible person i mean uh, they can easily convince people because they uh, can be trusted and now if you see these advertisements now these companies they pay billions or millions of dollars to the to the models or to the sportsmen so why what is shayad afridi like what he has to do or what is he doing in certain advertisement why because he is a credible person and people can yes, be sir. easily convinced if they if he or if they make him the ambassador of their product so credible yes okay if you see this another one adjectives which ends with al these are uh, another kind of uh, adjectives like suffix when we add suffix al with it for example natural or criminal or seasonal or if you see this the, there is this another one okay um extravagant do you know extravagant whenever we end uh, adjectives in uh, uh, with this ant or vigilant do you know vigilant ha huh? yes sir yeah. what is vigilant sir it means that you are observable and you note things yes very good whenever you watch something carefully 
so he's vigilant. Alert, sir. Alert or vigilant. Alert. Yes, vigilant. Yes. Cats are always vigilant, right? They they observe things very carefully. Or uh, defiant. Hmm. Or extravagant. Extravagant means. Extravagant means that a person who spends a lot. Very good. Excellent. Mashallah, you have, you know these adjectives. Yes. Who spends a lot of money. I mean, kind of, uh, that they waste money in, in a way. Uh, they use, I mean, spend money uh, all the time. Okay. So these are the different uh, suffixes. If you see, I mean, uh, we can identify these adjectives because of the suffixes. So you see it, right? Organic or uh, this another one, or for example, uh, this humorous, or uh, for example, expensive or uh, expressive or pensive. Do you know pensive? This one. So what I'm just telling you is that oh, you sir. can identify these uh, adjectives because it ends with I, V, E or less, for example, hopeless or, or faultless. And these suffixes also can give you meaning. Remember, like less, whenever we have this less, it is like without something. Or for example, this uh, uh, Y, see, there are certain adjectives that ends with Y. For example, brainy or uh, tasty or uh, gruchy. Gruchy means, what does this mean? Hmm? Anybody can tell me. Do you know this word? No, sir. It's like grumpy person. I mean, who is very, I mean, irritates people all the time. He's a grumpy old man. He always like irritates people. Grumpy. Okay. So these annoying. are, huh? Yes. Annoying. Annoying. Kind. Yes, annoying. Like, for example, annoying. Uh, he's very annoying. I mean, he always asks about things all the time and he irritates you. Or a bad-tempered person, like he has a very bad temper. So what we do is that forms can be like, for example, we can change nouns into adjectives or verbs into adjectives. Like, for example, hero is a is a noun and we can have adjective or wind uh, can be an uh, can be a adjective windy so wind is a noun and windy is uh, adjective or accept is a verb and acceptable is the adjective or attract is the verb and attractive is the adjective so see when you have nouns and you know this how to form wo words different kind of adjectives it really enrich your vocabulary. Like for example, you learn a verb and you know how to uh, aid the suffix with it to make it adjective. So it will help you in building your vocabulary. So, okay, so then there are like, uh, we, we mostly uh, change adjectives or identify adjectives by their suffixes. But sometimes there are uh, prefixes as well or a prefix A, okay? When we put A with, I mean, in the beginning of the word, it, it makes it adjective and it can be identified sub, sometimes, it can be identify, identified by their, uh, uh, this uh, prefix A. For example, wake is a verb and awake is an adjective. Or for, for example, sleep is a verb when you say he sleeps all the time. And when you say he is asleep all the time. So see, if you remember that uh, state sentence, which I told you that whenever we have a subject and, uh, uh, and uh, this state verb, and then we can have adjective. So asleep, asleep is what? This is an adjective and sleep is a verb. So have you ever used this word asleep in your uh, writing or speaking? See if somebody yes, asks. Sir, we, we have, I yeah. have used it, sir. Many yes. Times. So, how do you use it? Can you tell me? 
sir i am asleep or i uh, i am always asleep now uh, you are always asleep. like for example i message you and you uh, you send me back the message and you say i am asleep kana i am awake sir then yes because like for example you can never send a person a message that i am asleep why because if you are asleep how are you sending that message <laughs> yes sir so you can say that well when you called me yesterday i was asleep at that time so it yes, shows you the status so what okay so and then there are these uh, so few i mean some most adjective uh, which we use in our daily life uh, they they we cannot identify them by their uh, suffixes like for example uh, uh, good or nice or old or wet see these adjectives is like they are very hard to identify why because we don't have these suffixes or prefixes with it so mostly with the, the adjectives we use in our daily life or the common adjectives that we cannot identify by their form or there are certain adjectives that we cannot identify by their form then how we we will identify those adjectives how will we come to know that these are adjectives hmm like for example these uh, sir from the quality like from the definition of the adjectives that mm, they qualify no. the noun yes 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 fine but some but we can know we can identify any adjective when it is used in a tense or a sentence so the way we use it in a sentence it we can identify it if you remember yesterday we talked about this adjective fast now fast is the adjective and it is also a adverb so the way we use it will tell us that is whether it's adjective or adverb so in exams they will never ask you that what is this under what is this word fast is adjective or adverb they will give it you in a in a sentence so when you go and read the sentence and you know how to like whether it's a adverb or a adjective the tense will show you the tense will tell you whether it's adjective or adverb the way it is used in a sentence tell us that it is an adjective so again to sum up like uh, we have adjectives uh, that can be end in suffixes and we studied those suffixes like i o u s or ends in l y or a r y these kind of we can identify it very easily but then there are certain adjectives which we cannot identify we will identify them when we use them in a sentence okay so remember sentence structure you have to learn this there are other sentence structures that the way we use these adjectives but uh, mostly we use these adjectives in in four different ways like for example if you see these uh, these words that i'm highlighting is uh, these are the adjectives uh, but see one adjective and it is used in four different ways do you see it yes sir and it has a, a different meaning so you have to memorize these four structure the one you already know it and maybe you know these i mean i know you know these four structures so sometimes we change the form of adjectives or for example the degrees the superlative or the comparative i know you know these superlative and comparative degree degrees so yes, you can, sir. so you can have uh, four different kind of structures the way you change the adjective like for example if you st- if you remember we talked about this verb now verb also has different forms and adjectives have different degrees like for example tall taller tallest and tall now we don't have a proper or a, like there there isn't any rule uh that how can we change a uh, different form of verbs like for example we have irregular verbs or regular verbs that when we add ed with it or sometimes we add uh, uh b- we have irregular verbs which are totally different like go and gone 
see how it changes form is there isn't any rule we don't know how to change it but these uh, degrees of adjectives we can have a rule and for our for our ease we have divided to adjectives into one syllable words uh, one syllable or two syllable or three syllables so if you see this tall is one syllable okay so we need these different degrees of adjectives in order to make these four different kind of sentence structure and the same adjective can be used in four different ways there are other structure we'll be studying that tomorrow the complex kind of uh, structure but these are very simple and you have to be like you 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 must know them 100 percent that how can we use these superlative and comparative degrees so you know this uh, one syllable words right now if you see the, the the vowel sound whenever we have a vowel sound in a word so whenever we have one vowel sound that is one syllable so it's very easy that whenever we have one syllable words we mostly add er or est with it you already know that that's why i'm just like speeding this uh, i'm just like quickly telling you right if you have any confusion you just ask me i will explain in detail but i think you know what one syllable words are right it is clear sir yes so but i'm just like quickly telling you and then we'll just like go and uh, forward okay so okay and then uh, we have two syllable words so uh, two syllable words like for example happy right or happier or happiest so and then if you see i've written over here that we can use both er or most with it or more with it like we can also say is it right to say when i say i'm more happy or i'm happier which one is right i'm happier sir or because if i not... say i'm more happy sir we cannot more add the word more or very with certain words because it's not the rule like we cannot uh, uh, say that more happy. yes okay now remember this is a little bit confusing again if you remember i told you that it's very difficult to make these rules for uh, like grammar because it's it's that is the problem like first we had this language and then we uh, uh made these rules or this grammar for it so it's very difficult to make rules for something which is already existed like for example we had this language okay for many years and now we are trying to to find out how it works and we are trying to make rules for it so it's always confusing remember if the, these two syllable words are confusing because why it's confusing is that sometimes with two syllable words we can use er with it or sometimes we can use more with it as well so it's not wrong when you say i'm more happy it's also correct maybe it's rare we mostly do not use uh, more with happy but yes in certain cases we can use uh, more with it remember so any two words uh, the two words syllable words like two syllable words uh, when uh, again some people say that there is this rule that when it ends with y like h a w p y happy so we can change it into e r or e s t but still again i just told you that it is confusing so mostly these two syllable words they can have uh, i mean we can use them in both ways uh, we can add er with it and we can use more with it as well so if somebody says i'm more happy it doesn't mean that that is wrong it a is it can be used in different uh, sense like for example when we know about this uh, happy if we had uh, talked about it before so i can say that i'm more happy do you understand Sir. yes sir so, so these two syllable words you have to be very careful with these two syllable words like for example clever now clever is a two syllable word right cla 
v right it has two syllables as well so it is not necessary that it will have two syllables or for example you know these vowel uh, sounds right a e i o u and uh, sometimes we can have different like y also give you a vowel sound so like in happy if you see a is the vowel and y also give you a, a, a vowel sound so it has two syllables now clear clever sorry clever can you make a, a imperative degree for clever can you do that please quickly do that clever more clever okay and so why you said more clever it is two syllable word why don't you say cleverer sir with two syllable words we can use uh, more, more in comparative form yes sir yes but again this happy is also two syllable word why we use er with it or est with sir, it sir we have uh, studied that uh, uh. a word ends with i why uh, uh -huh. changes to i and uh, we add er with it when we but, change it to comparative but uh, but what i just told you that i can also say that i am more happy it's not incorrect so what sir, I'm it's saying, rare it it cannot come to the mouth sir <laughs> yes it's very awkward to say it yes you are 100% right but remember we are studying this uh, descriptive grammar as well so we will go and find whether people are using it or not so yes people use it in certain places so it doesn't mean that it is incorrect it is a little bit confusing but uh, yes we can use it or friendly or friend uh, friendlier or more friendly or simple see this simple word simpler or the most or the more simple right so we can have this uh, and remember this superlative degree always take the with it right the tallest the biggest remember this okay you already know that as well right so simpler or or more simpler or simplest or okay hello can you hear me now yes sir so what yes, sir yes so i know you know these rules so what i'm just telling you is that we will go and find out these exceptional cases and how people use it and then we will come to know yet yeah, that yes it's rare i mean mostly we do not use it but yes in certain cases we can use it so these two syllable words are always confusing remember you don't know where like how to use more with it and most with it like for example this busy okay we can say busier he's the busiest person or you can say he's the most busy person so these two syllable words i mean there are certain words that it can take both uh, forms it can take er with it or it can also take more with it and then we have these three syllable words you see important important it has three syllables so we mostly use more with it and most with it you already know uh, for example intelligent it has uh, uh, again it's more than three word or two word syllable so we can aid uh, more with it and most with it do you get it huh yes sir and, yes sir uh, okay but again if you see there are these other words like for example good looking guy now good looking is it a two syllable or three syllable good looking huh three syllable sir so what why why we have not you see this uh, good see it's three <laughs> syllable word so but we know this good is irregular word what is the the degree of good 
Hmm? Sir, good looking is an irregular, irregular adjective. Uh, sorry, yes. good is an irregular adjective, uh, and we change when we change it to comparative. Mm, it takes uh, better. Yes, like if you don't know the rule, I mean, I've seen people that they say I'm the gooder or I'm the goodest. Ibrahim always says it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if you say I'm the gooder or I'm the I'm the goodest. Now, maybe in future, we will have this uh, also, this form. That we will be able to say the gooder, the, the good, the gooder, the, good, the, the best, right? But uh, nowadays, it's not a rule. We cannot use it. It is not acceptable when you say good, gooder, good, or goodest. So we have irregular, we'll talk about it. So if you see this, good looking is three syllable words. See, it's a very long word, but still what happens is that we can use uh, batter with it. Why? Because it's an irregular word. And if you see batter, so the first later, we will change the first later. So, and the, the next will, like, it's one word, good looking. Remember, it's a compound adjective, good looking. And it has three syllables or maybe more than two syllables. So, but we will not say that good, more good looking or most good looking. No, we'll say better looking or best looking. Or for example, this another example is low paid. Now, low paid is one adjective. Remember, low paid. Do you see this? Yes, sir. Uh, see this low paid. Now, low paid is uh, adjective. So we will not say he's the, he's the most low paid person. Or it, so we will have this uh, another uh, form of adjective degree is that we will try to focus on this first form, this, uh, this one, right? So low, lower and lowest so we will change this sir, one huh? actually sir uh, this low paid looks uh, compound uh, noun i think compound adjective yes i told you compound adjectives good looking is also compound adjective but again i'm I, i'm telling you these are just like rules we do do not have it all the time remember we we uh, have these exceptional cases. And then if you see, there are these uh, irregular adjectives, like we talked about it, good, better, best. It does not follow that more or ER rule or bad or worse or worst or far or further or farthest or old or older, old or elder or eldest or old, older, oldest. That is the regular verb. But this old, elder, and eldest. Okay. So do you know the difference between uh, further and farther? This one and this one. When we use this one. And when we use this one. Huh? No, sir. It is used for, uh, like, for example, uh, uh, distance like I can say I cannot go farther a with a when I say a right it, it tells us about the distance right and if I say he cannot think further so we will use think with it okay do you understand and further means with like this with farther we use distance yes yes okay, like, for example, I can not go for, uh, further. I cannot go further. And I cannot think further, right? Like, I cannot think means that, no. uh, yes, a period of, uh, like, a place, right? And uh, further means, like, when you talk about the distance, kind of. Uh, okay? So, further is, I think, the actual distance that is present. Yes, yes. And the other one is like uh, 
again a mental kind of like when we just uh, say it we don't have actual distance yes you are right so i just give you an example remember uh, like i i cannot think further now there is and we are not talking about the distance the actual distance so and in further we use it right so okay and then there are these uh, other adjectives that we do not have uh, a comparative and superlative form for it like for example these ones see blind or for example dead how can you say can you say he is more dead or he is the, uh, the most dead person no dead is dead right we cannot say uh, comparative we cannot have comparative degrees for such were uh, such adjectives you see those adjectives final right it is final it is already a kind of a, we we can use it as a superlative degree so we can not have uh, these uh, comparative and superlative degrees for some few adjectives like unique you can never say he is uniquer or more unique do you guys get it? Hello. Yes, sir. Did you know yes, sir. this? Did you know this that there are certain adjectives that we cannot have comparative and superlative degree with it? Did you know yes, this rule? Did you know this rule before? Like you, you knew this rule, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. okay fine. And the most important one is this one, right? Like uh, there are certain adjectives which ends with ed or ing. Uh, yes, there are certain adjectives that it, it ends with ed or er or uh, ing. Like for example, yes, bored or boring. Now it's it's yes, sir. Bored stative adjective. Yes, and boring. Boring is also sir stative adjective. What is the difference? Is mm -hmm. bored. <laughs> yes. Uh, he is boring, sir. Um, a person who is boring. Uh, yes. Bores so it, other people. Yes. So it it gives you a very opposite kind of meaning. Like you can never say that I am boring. When you say I'm boring, you are kind of, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, you, you should never say this, that I'm boring person. You say I'm bored. When you say I'm bored, I'm bored because of someone. Like you are boring, that's why I'm boring. And I'm bored, right? You say this, yeah, class, yes, this class is boring, so I am bored. See, this ED really helps you, right? Like, and it gives you a totally uh, opposite kind of meaning. Like, for example, this class is boring, that's why I'm bored. Is it boring today? No, sir. Okay, no, sir. so, so no, then, it, then it means you are we not... are bored. Huh? <laughs> Though we are bored, oh, though we paradox. are bored, it's not boring. Though we are bored, right? So see these. Gap, 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 sir. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But see the the, the the like for example, when we put ing with it, it gives us another adjective and a, which has totally different meaning. So you so say, we... well, the movie is very boring. That's why I'm bored. So you never say I'm bored. Remember, there isn't any, like, we cannot use it, bore. We say... Sir, the pe people always say, sir, I'm interesting in English class. Instead of interested, uh, they say interesting. Yes, so that is wrong. Yes, English is a very interesting subject, and I'm interested in it. So, yes, ED or I, or I, or for example, this class is very satisfying, and I am satisfied with it yes with it now these are oh, for example he is very disappointing or i'm disappointed but if you say i'm disappointing you are kind of abusing yourself when you say i'm disappointing sir. today yeah i mean of course you can never say that sir. Uh, 
Yes. Sir, when we add ing with it, then it become present participle. Yes, pre but it is working as an edge. Not all verbs work this way. There are few verbs that it can be an adjective. So uh, yes, this ing form or gerund form can also be an adjective. Remember, disappointing is an adjective or disappointed is also adjective. So there are certain verbs that they can work as adjective and the third form is working as an adjective. For example, surprised or surprising or amazed or amazing or for example, uh, shocked or shocking or for example, excited or exciting. The match is very exciting. We are very excited to go and watch that match or impressed or impressing. Do you understand me? Or amazed yes. or amazing. Now, another thing is uh, you need to go and uh, learn prepositions with it. If you don't know a preposition, uh, then it is your passive vocabulary. You will not be able to use it. Like for example, if you remember, uh, like I just told you this, uh, uh, and mostly I know you know it, but sometimes it's very uh, difficult to find adjective with it, like, sorry, preposition with it. And if you don't put the right preposition, uh, then there will be a problem. Like for example, if you say, I'm disappointed with you or in you? In you. Yes, in you and with you, we can also use with with it or in with, uh, in with it. So like find these verbs that how can you use uh, preposition with it. I'm excited, uh, excited, like which prep preposition we can use with amazed. Amazed. Give us some options. <laughs> you people are Who's like that? always get these MCQs. And so if you talk to somebody, you will say, well, give me some hint and then I will tell you. No, sir. Then we will modify the sentence according to the need. Okay. Aap mujhe ye batao, jaldi se. Agar aap kaho ke main tum par ghussa hoon, to kaise isko translate karoge? Main tum par ghussa hoon. I'm angry at you. Okay. I'm angry with you. So right. which one is right? I'm angry with you, sir. At you or with you, which one is right? With you. Huh? With you. Someone, when you are angry with someone, you say, I'm angry with you. Okay. And if you are angry at or something, you say, I'm angry at something. So see, that is the difference. That's why I just wrote this uh, for heading. Example, sir. Like, for example, angry at something. Like, for example, I'm angry at the system. I'm angry at this TV. I mean, it's not working properly. I'm angry at my computer. Or I'm angry with my brother. I'm angry with you. So see, this is the difference, right? Now, if you don't know this uh, with or at, it means you don't know angry as well. Like I, if you go, and some people say, Aapne to phir bhi achha kaha ke at or with lagaya. Many people say, I'm angry on you. They translate it from Urdu to English. So here we cannot translate from any other language. It's a big problem, sir. No, it's Please. not a big problem. No, we no, 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 sir. Uh, why is it does it? not have no any no rule, sir. listen to me listen to me it's very easy to learn it remember you are if you are a good reader remember and i just told you that this is very important for prescriptive grammar that whenever you read try to concentrate and the more you read i mean you will know these uh, the, the, that which uh, adjective takes which preposition I mean, if you ever say that I'm angry on you, I mean, it will sound incorrect. Or for example, some people say, believe in me or on me. Which one is right? 
believe in me. Yes, but uh, some people say believe on me. I mean that is incorrect. But if you are a good reader and you read and observe uh, these rules or these uh, preposition, I mean it is kind of a stock sentences or stock words that you sometimes don't know the rule. There isn't any rule. Remember, you just know how it is used. Got it? Like I'm happy with you, or I'm good at something, right? Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. There is a shortcut, but I will never tell you a shortcut that you I can send you these uh, adjectives with prepositions. But uh, what I'm just telling you is that you should go and read. Remember, when you go and read and concentrate. Uh, and uh, like, for example, you say I'm married with him or to him. Okay. Yes, to see you already know this. So don't worry. But but yes, if you have not used it, then you will make Actually, mistakes. sir, sometimes um, a single preposition has many usages. So we get confused in it. Uh, the one you first asked, sir. It's uh, okay. angry with you or angry at you but now you know it right yes sir so so mm -hmm. if you okay. go and like read with the concentration you will know this right you will know like for example sometimes i don't know the rules there isn't any rules but the way you say it the way i say it or speak it it sounds very awful like for example many people will say i'm satisfied for, i'm satisfied from you because Urdu may we say tum se hu, but in English we use with with it, not from with it. So here you cannot translate it from Urdu to English. Remember, here you can just uh, like it has a different kind of uh, rule or it, it doesn't have a rule. Basically, I'm proud of you or I'm scared of you. Right. Or I'm, I'm aware of. Yes, it, it will only reading will help you. If you go and read and read and read and read, I'm envious of you, not from you. I'm jealous of you. It is kind of you, right? Nice of you. See all these adjective states different. Disappointed in, experienced in something, entrusted in something or I'm involved in something, or I'm uh, uh, like, for example, he is skilled in something, or successful in something, not with something. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Sir, can we can you repeat this? Envy with someone or envy at something? Envy. Because, no, uh, no, no, no. Envy, envy is a verb. Remember, I envy you. Not envy, sir. Angry. Envious. No, sir. I'm talking about angry. Angry with someone. If you are angry with someone, right? A human being. And if you are angry at something, something, you know, something. I'm angry yes. at my car. It always breaks down. Okay? Like, for example... Really, sir? No, no, I have a new car. <laughs> but yes, I had a car and it was, it, it always had problems and it would always break down. So, yes, I was angry at my uh, old that car. car. That's why I <laughs> sold it. Okay. Yes. So, see, uh, try to find these adjectives. But remember, isolated words will never help you. You have to learn words in phrases. When you know a word in phrases, you will be able to use it. Otherwise, you won't be able to use it. Like, for example, if you know a word and you don't know a preposition with it, I mean, you cannot use it. Angry is just one word. You ask, go and ask anybody this word angry. They will tell you angry means gussa, just that Urdu But if you don't know a, a phrase with it, you will not be able to use it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. 
Okay, good, Zabadas. So try never learn words in in isolation. Remember, isolated words will not going to help you. You have to learn uh, words with prepositions or with phrases in a phrase. Then you so will be able. Your to... reading helps a lot because when yes. we read, we don't know that why it is used. But uh, when we read a lot, then when we use the same word uh, yes. in our uh, in our uh, society or in some country when we are talking. That we are naturally using those words. Yes. Like the native. Yes. Exactly. I've experienced this same thing because uh, about most of the rules uh, that you are talking about, I don't know about them, but yeah. I'm uh, like naturally using them. Yes. May it's it, it's maybe because of your school or uh, maybe because of your environment. In I mean, if you are in your home, if you if if you are talking in English. So yes, of course. You so there is the, the there are these two ways to learn English. One is uh, from very young age when you speak with your parents or your teachers, right? And if your teachers are talking to you in English, you understand that and you improve just by listening to them. And there is this another rule which we uh, follow it in uh, in in our in our government schools that they learn uh, English by rules. Remember, they just learn active into passive and direct into indirect and what is verb and what is adjective or what is clause or what is phrase. That is also helpful. Remember, I've seen these people who have studied in very good schools like Bicken House or uh, Bloomfield. They speak very, very good English. But sometimes they make certain blunders, like sometimes they make these, these uh, very basic uh, grammatical errors because they, don't, they never studied grammar. So both are important. Remember, even uh, native speaker people, like they also study grammar in their higher um, education because if you're writing a, a research paper you should know about these prepositions and this this grammar you, then you will be able to write clearly otherwise if you don't know grammar then there will be a problem i think if you are uh, another class started did sir message you yes sir sir answer already message okay thank you so much see you tomorrow we'll be talking about these adjectives tomorrow as well okay thank you for the office for the office